Hey, braces and no mustache. What's up? And today, I'm going to resume list week 2017. Despite being very tired and worried, and um, I, and um, the weather is really cold right now, so I'm wearing like a jacket. And because of that, I'm also there's also a tons of jackets and clothes behind me, and uh, I don't have space. I don't have anywhere to put it, like I used to before in my videos. So uh, it's gonna be there. So uh, don't mind me. And uh, I'm not gonna pronounce words that appropriately. So uh, don't mind me. I'm just having a hard time trying to speak properly and uh yeah let's let's do let's do this video so today i'm going to be talking about top 10 best tv series or tv shows seasons of 2017 and also top 10 best tv episodes of 2017 these two lists are really similar so I'm going to be quick. Let's start off with top 10 TV episodes. So, uh, there are some honorable mentions, including Prison Break Selfless. Yes, Prison Break is back, and Wentworth Miller is also back, and they come back with a, with a kind of ex expectable and predictable season. And predictable doesn't mean it's bad. Predictable as in... Yeah, I pr Prison Break. It's gonna be good. Prison Break season one is fantastic, and it kind of goes downhill afterwards. But this Prison Break return is um is one of the better revival TV shows of this decade, and um, Selfless is one of the best episodes of this season, and also House of Cards chapter sixty four, despite. Kevin Spacey's sexual allegations and all of those controversial things. Let's put them aside for now. And um, you gotta admit, House of Cards Chapter 64 is a good episode. But um, it's still not in the top 10. Also, honorable mentions is The Crown's Dear Mrs. Kennedy. It's like a crossover between Queen Elizabeth and Jackie Kennedy. Of the USA and uh, it's really historically accurate and it's kind of interesting too. Definitely should watch it. Number 10 would surprisingly be a comedy episode. Master of None, A Marcy Un Po, where um, the whole episode is more like a romantic comedy and it works out really well. Number 9 is This Is Us Memphis, which is also a very uh, heartfelt, a very sincere, a very touching and emotional episode about uh, someone's past, someone's backstory. A lot of things are revealed on this episode and um, overall it's a very it's a very touching and emotional and powerful episode. Memphis. Number eight would be Game of Thrones, The Dragon and the Wolf. Out of all the seven episodes on um, the latest season my favorite is the dragon and the wolf and usually people would say their favorite is the spoils of war which is really entertaining visually but there's nothing revelating about it but what's really groundbreaking is the dragon and the wolf which has this really huge meetup for the first half of the episode and uh, there's also a character death that is really controversial because uh it's not the most well-written death scenes ever but it's still a satisfying death scene and uh, the ending also gives a, a an okay a decent cliffhanger that may potentially be one of the most destructive things ever happened to the world of game of thrones so um this episode has some really good acting really good dialogues and um it's more focused and uh it's more excellently written Number seven would be Big Little Lies, You Get What You Want, which is the finale of season one of Big Little Lies. A lot of things are revealed. It's a lot more suspenseful. It's a lot more intense. And the characters are a lot more bold and aggressive. And um, 
Yeah, I'm not too familiar with Big Little Lies, but, um, that finale. Gotta check it out. Number six is Better Call Saul's Chicanery. Chicanery is one of the most well-written and well-directed episodes of, like, this year. And it's really well-written because it mainly focuses on the brother, the brotherly feud between the main character, Jimmy, and um, his brother, Chuck. And um, they basically went on trial, and it was really intense, and Jimmy also played tricks on Chuck, and Chuck also played mind tricks on Jimmy, and uh, it's really intense, it's really passive-aggressive, and um, the whole episode is just packed with really amazing highlights, and it's also incredibly legally accurate, so um, gotta give that. But number five. We are entering the top five, and number five would be The Handmaid's Tale Night, which is also the finale of Handmaid's Tale Season 1, and uh, it's uh, really revelating, it's a really powerful episode. A lot of things happened, a lot of devastating things happened on this episode, and uh, it's also really intense, really suspenseful, and um, it's the classic, really classic, solid finale for for um for a drama series because it's really dramatic and climactic. Number four is the leftover the book of Nora. The leftover hits its last season and the book of Nora reveals a lot about the show. It's like a lost, it's a, like a more packed and a more uh, obscured version of lost. It's not as grand as, as lost but a lot of confusing but entertaining things are on that episode, and a lot of things are revealed. It gets more and more interesting, and it really hooks you in. It's really intriguing, and it deserves the fourth place. But number three would be Stranger Things The Gate, which is another really solid, entertaining season finale for a classic dramatic season that um, we all watch in the 2010s. And uh, Stranger Things The Gate is um, is also full of amazing highlights, including Will's very scary scene towards the end. And some of the more epic scenes are Eleven closing the gate, and um, Steve and the kids burning down the underground tunnels or the vines. And uh, it gets really intense and epic and climactic, and it's packed with solid moments. And, um, yes. Number two would be Twin Peaks Part 16, where it gets really gloomy, obscured, and interesting and confusing. Twin Peaks has returned, yes, and it really proves us that David Lynch is a great director and writer. And on this episode, it still gets really strange and quirky and freaky, and it has a bit of funny and comedic moments. Which is something great and special about Twin Peaks, drama and comedy mixed together. And there's also a lot of questionable and intriguing and confusing moments. And um, overall, the whole episode really makes a great marking point for the series itself. And um, it definitely makes Twin Peaks a great TV show. But number one, like last year, last year's best episode is Battle of the Bastards and the Winds of Winter, both of them. And this time, the best episode is Mr. Robot, Runtime Error, and Kill Process. Two episodes together, because our Runtime Error is Stage 2 executing, and Kill Process is trying to stop Stage 2. It's two episodes, back to back. You need to watch it, back to back. Because it's freaking amazing. Runtime error is like Birdman, which is, which looks like it's shot in one take, and uh, all these great and insane camera works, all these great acting from Rami Malek and Portia Doubleday, and it's really intense. You know, chaos is coming down, and the entire building is is in jeopardy, is in chaos, and um. Wow, a lot of people got hurt, and wow, there's a lot of intense and suspenseful scenes on this uh, on this episode of Runtime Error. 
and uh it's like a roller coaster of things of events and events and events and um it's a hell of a shocking episode the first four episodes of the season is a, a, sl a bit of a bit slow but uh, this one is it's it just blew the series out of the water then we have kill process which is even more dramatic and heartfelt i guess runtime error is climactic it's entertaining but kill process is more inside it's more it's more deep it's more heartfelt and it's more painful and emotional because of the twist at the end and uh, rami malik um uh, he plays Elliot, and Elliot was trying to stop stage two, and, you know, and he and Mr. Robot really struggled a lot. They had a lot of fights, and uh, it gets really, like, oh my gosh, what's happening? What's happening? And um, it gets really intense towards the end, but um, at first, the ending gives you a satisfying feeling, like, well, it's a happy ending, right? And then you get to the real ending and you're like, the twist, the twist is so huge. Like, after you've seen the twist, you would be like, yeah, why hadn't I seen the full picture? Oh my gosh. So basically, that's the top 10 TV episodes, 10 TV seasons of 2017, it's also incredibly fam similar. Number 10 would be The Crown, season 2, which is um, even more uh, well-written than season 1. It's packed with more interesting moments, and it's historically accurate. Yes, number 9 would be This Is Us. And um, yeah, again, it's really emotional and heartfelt, it's full of touching and powerful moments between these ordinary people from everyday lives they connect with each other in different ways and uh it's um it's magical it's really humane and number eight would be master of none season two and uh arguably it's the best comedy show of the year veep is still running and uh, not that Veep is bad this year, but Veep isn't as good as Master of None. And season one, Master of None is just kind of nothing. It's just kind of boring and underwhelming. But season two really gets funnier and more climactic. And Aziz Ansari really got a lot of funny ideas, a lot of jokes. Number seven would be Game of Thrones season seven. Usually, I would put Game of Thrones in number one, unless Breaking Bad is also in the list. But this year, Game of Thrones kind of fell behind a little bit, because uh, it's not as thrilling and as unpredictable as the previous seasons. And a lot of people hated Game of Thrones Season 7 for that, but, but if you treat game of thrones as um as a fairy tale as a fantasy tv show it's still an incredibly well written well directed well shot well executed well produced tv show and um it's again it's packed with entertaining moments from the spoils of war to beyond the wall although it doesn't make much sense it's still visually stunning and uh the finale is also really fulfilling and satisfying. Number six is Better Call Saul Season 3. Season 1 is really entertaining and funny. Season 2 hits a little bit of a down point. But Season 3, it gets really entertaining because of Gus's return. And also Jimmy and Chuck's feud. Which gets really more and more intense. And um, it gets really tr tragic and sad at the end in my opinion and uh it has a lot of slow moments but slow doesn't mean it's bad or nor it's boring slow it could be really well written it could be really well thought out it's really thoughtful the dialogues are amazing and the acting by bob odenkirk jonathan banks and um chuck's actor is really amazing Number five would be The Handmaid's Tale, 
season one. A great, a great debut season, and uh, a great season from Hulu. Great performances from Elizabeth Moss, and uh, congratulations on its win for Emmys. It's not super super duper great but uh it's still it's still really harsh if you want your television shows a little bit more angry a little bit more triggering at the same time more depressing and pathetic and dystopian and dark watch the handmaid's tale which is dystopian and terrifying as well number four is the leftover Season 4, which is the last season of The Leftover. It gets really interesting, it gets really confusing and entertaining, and um, weird things start to happen. It gets really confusing and entertaining, it's full of twists and turns, gotta watch it. And number 3 would be Twin Peaks Season 3. Twin Peaks is back after 26 long years, and man, is it amazing. First of all, the hype is real. The anticipation is real. And the show really lives up to the hype. David Lynch continues delivering all these great episodes, great storylines. Kyle MacLachlan and Laura Dern did amazingly in this show. And Amanda Seyfried is also on the show, on the season. Um, the show didn't focus on her too much, but um, it's kind of cool that she's also in the TV series right now. And, uh, yeah, it's even more confusing. It's full of more amazing moments, highlights. It's more scarier and funnier at the same time. And, uh, 2017 is not too bad of a year for television. Because Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks. And then, number two would be Mr. Robot Season 3. Sam Esmail continues delivering more uh more disorienting more dark tales about hacking and about pol politics and um season one and two is really special season one is more slow and confusing but the twists at the end is amazing and season two is in my opinion, one of the best TV seasons of 2010s. It's really disorienting, it's really challenging, it gets really strange and fucked up, and uh, I really like the tone overall. It's dark, it's chilling, and um, something's going wrong, something's going wrong. And on the season, it's more woke, it's more realistic. And um, it's way more climactic and dramatic and entertaining. And uh, the first four episodes is kind of slow. But later on, the show gets really insane and bold and daring. Rami Malek and Christian Slater continues to give amazing performances. And um, my goodness, there's a lot of character deaths on this season. And uh, this season is way more political and it's way more dark and deep because of all the people connections. And uh, you can tell that the show is getting larger and larger. And a uh, pretty nice cliffhanger too. Gotta watch it. Definitely gotta watch it. Such a shame that Mr. Robot is not nominated for Emmys nor Golden Globes. Because it's really quality. Number one would be Stranger Things Season 2. Besides of episode 1 and the 7th episode, the entire season is great. Not one single moment of the season is useless. It's underwhelming. Because um, everything, every storyline in this season is entertaining, it's engaging, it's intriguing. And uh, more new characters, Max, Billy, Dr. Owens, and Bob... And uh, it also gets grander in scale. And uh, it's really entertaining and dramatic. And the scary moments are even scarier on season two. It's so scary. It's chilling. The, the shadow monster and the demo dogs, they get really scary. And um, the character of Jim Hopper and Steve Harrington really really gets better and um 
Episode 1 is kind of slow, but it's also really promising. And Episode 7 is controversial, and a lot of people hate Episode 7. But in my opinion, Episode 7 is also kind of necessary, and it's not too bad of an episode. So, don't hate this episode. It's, it's actually decent. And uh, the writing is really good. It's really well-packed. It's well-organized. And you can tell that the Duffer Brothers really put a lot of effort on writing and directing and producing as well. And um, the whole tone and style of the season also gets grander and darker and also more fun. So, what is your top 10 best TV episodes and TV seasons of 2017? Comment below, and like if you like, and subscribe if you want more.